Guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Chad. I've spent all morning here working on a range test for you guys on how this Tango 2 will work when you have quads that are set up properly when they are not set up properly. And boy, did I learn a lesson. That would be when your quad is not set up properly and you try to push it as far as you can go. And guys, as always, please like, dislike, subscribe to the channel affiliate links down below if you want to hook me up youtube views are down and everything i don't rely on this for an income obviously but i do like to make at least enough money to pay for my editing software the 30 dollars a month and you know like i said things have just crashed with all this coppa and what everything else so anything you guys do to help get the, pr the videos promoted would be appreciated all right guys what's going on welcome back to the channel today what we're going to do is we are going to give the 250 milliwatt power in the tbs tango 2 it's best case and worst case scenario to see exactly how far we can fly safely comfortably how we feel before we turn around now this here is my seven inch source one this has the tbs pro 32 vtx pumping up to two watts it's got the immortal t in the vertical position that is pretty much the best scenario that you can have over here we have a five inch source one your typical build that most people fly 400 milliwatt vtx crossfire immortal t is underneath here so in one of the worst positions horizontal underneath typical freestyle park build here typical long range build we're going to give the video the best chance that we can with the HDO2s and all of the antennas that we have there. Just got done doing some wrenching, switching some things out, and putting this Immortal T in here this way. MIP tools here. If you guys don't have good tools, go inside your sockets and stuff. Links in the description below to pick some of those up. Don't be stripping out those screws. Now, I have had no problems with my TBS Tango. I've got everything bound up to all of my quads, not had a single issue. They've all auto bound, went into beta flight, flight one, whatever, random configuration. You can see I did change out my stick ends to some 3D printed ones just because I do like a little bit of a fatter top here being a thumber. I don't like the pointy things. So everything is good. It's all charged up, all ready to go. All we got to do is wait for it to quit snowing outside and then we're going to head out there and we are going to put these birds in the air. I also have the Tango 2 and Crossfire hooked up to my Traxxas TRX4 Sport FPV crawler. If you haven't seen that, there'll be a video up here you can take a look at and the video for that is going to be coming. So we're going to be testing out the 250 milliwatt power in the middle of the woods. How far can we go? How much can we penetrate? right up there on the ground where things are at its worst. Okay, so in between the snow here, we're gonna go ahead and run these tests. So this is the seven inch. Brain FPV Radix will be able to get real time data as far as what's going on with that nice little crossfire widget that's got in there. So I have the Tango 2 set to 250 milliwatts fixed, not dynamic. And what we're going to be looking at is the RSS value. So we'll explain that when we look at the video on the bench. So the whole goal here is to fly out to one kilometer, see what our rating is, come back. Then we'll compare that to the five inch build and see how that looks. So I've got everything fired up here on full power and I will give you guys my commentary as we fly. So we've got GPS and everything on this build. Right now we're sitting at uh, minus 17. So we should be able to hit a kilometer, no problem. Man, I forgot how crazy this thing flies. It flies like a big freaking bird. Gonna have to get some altitude. 
and right out here at this should be a kilometer guess I'm gonna need bore altitude there we go so we're at about minus 85 86 90 on the turnaround It's cold out, so the voltage is sagging quite a bit. Oh, bird attack. See how things are doing down low. Not too bad in the 80s. So I don't have the antenna pointing directly at it at all. I'm just kind of pointing straight in the direction and things seem to be hanging on pretty well. We better bring it in before we run out of volts. Going back to Crossfire Basics here, it's important to understand that TBS says that for each 6 dB represents twice the range of your current distance. So for example, if you are at 5 kilometers with the RSSI of minus 84, at 10 kilometers you are expected to see minus 90. Now I was at a kilometer there and I was seeing minus 90 and I think it blipped up a couple times. Now, these numbers are totally algorithmic. They're always changing, but the fact is, is that I personally would not have felt comfortable pushing that twice the distance at those kind of numbers. Now, I'm not sure if better antennas or 500 milliwatts will get us that far. I don't know. I know with my old Crossfire, I could fly out about a mile maybe a mile and a quarter uh, in that direction and still and feel relatively safe i would have more power to go so take it for what it is but i think we need a little bit more power all right so more real world testing here we've got the tango 2 now in the horizontal direction you can see the Immortal T down there on the five inch flight one is also in horizontal. Now I am getting a lot worse of uh, an RSS to start with. I think with the horizontal, I was starting at around 15. Now we're starting at about 35 just because it's smashed underneath all that carbon. If we point it at it, eh, I'm getting in the 20s. So I'm going to turn on the audible alert so we can compare RSS values. And it, I don't think we're going to be able to make it as far with this one just from, well, we just probably won't. But we'll push it till we get uh, to where I feel not as comfortable. So we've already dropped out of uh, mode two and we're in mode one.
five DB one ninety six DB ninety two DB one ninety one DB one RF signal critical eighty nine DB so oh, feel safe ninety three DB one Oh no. That is not what we wanted. So I did run these tests a couple times and that's what happened on my last test. It's not a shock that that happened just because of the way that the antenna is mounted. I mean, you just can't mount your antenna that way and expect to just fly as far as you want to. In my previous flights that I did today, I was able to rip back and forth all throughout these fields uh, as far as I wanted to, just not out that far. Now, on the other S side of the field, I you never break line of sight. So even though the nulls would be pointing at me, I still never experienced any real big drops in, in my RSSI value or anything like that, maybe to the 80s or 90s at its lowest. So I guess the final conclusion is mount your stuff right. 250 milliwatts is good, but 500 milliwatts would be better. And I'm not sure about the antenna. Like I don't want to switch to an SMA. I mean, I will if the jury's out that it will make a bigger difference. I like, you know, the foldability and stuff like this, but unscrewing an antenna isn't really that big of a deal. You know, turning it, using it as a kickstand, all that kind of stuff will still work the same. So I guess we'll just have to see. I just wanted to provide everybody with some real world examples. Um, you know, TBS did a video showing how far you can fly with a wing. And that's a very, very small percentage of people. A lot of people are flying birds just like this. And these are pretty much uh, the results that I expected. I didn't expect to fail safe. I should have uh, turned around, but I was kind of, you know, spinning around right there, uh, trying to get a good reading on the number. And it just caught me, luckily with DVR, 60 frame per second DVR, I was able to go right to it. Crossfire uh, picked up uh, its signal, led me right to it, motor beep, boom. So, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Hopefully we're able to teach you something here and uh, we'll see you on the next one.